You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. Welcome to the FOD Pod, the Practical Horseman Podcast, mini series where we share audio clips from our favorite Practical Horseman On Demand videos. At Practical Horseman On Demand, You can enjoy hundreds of how-to videos and get insider access to exclusive interviews and lectures, slow motion demonstrations, and step-by-step tutorials taught by top-level pros in the hunter, jumper, equitation, and eventing disciplines. Head over to practicalhorsemanondemand.com and use promo code FODPOD for 15% off when you sign up. That's practicalhorsemanondemand.com and promo code FODPOD That's P-H-O-D-P-O-D for 15% off. On this week's episode, John Michael Durr answers common questions about why cross-country fences appear to be different heights and how the same jump can be used in different divisions. He explains how course designers measure cross-country jumps and shows how placement of the jump on terrain can change the height of the jump. Now, enjoy the clip. Hey guys, JM here, back to talk about one of the questions I get asked all the time as a course designer. People always wonder why jumps look such different sizes throughout their course, or why one jump was used on training at the last show and now it's being used on novice or being used on prelim. I've found a lot of people don't actually know how we measure jumps and set the heights for fences. So in show jumping, the jump is measured from the ground to the top rail. In cross country, because we're on such even terrain, we measure our jumps where the average horse and rider would take off. So most of us use a six or an eight foot level. We find level and then we get that there and we look at the height. So here you have a smaller size beginner novice fence. Okay, so even though it measures a beginner novice fence out of the ground, Because the ground comes down to it a little bit, it measures on the small side for beginner novice. Now, out of the ground, we have a beginner novice fence. The interesting thing is if we were to come jump this the other way, when we measure it about six feet out, where the average horse and rider would take off, measure the same way, find level, come on, all of a sudden, we have a jump that's on the bigger side of training. So you could use a beginner novice fence as a training level fence on the top of a hill. Now, same theory goes. Coming downhill, I could use a novice fence here as a beginner novice fence because this beginner novice fence was below height. A novice fence that's slightly bigger, the ground makes it measure lower. So when we're riding cross country, we're always get or designing cross country rather, we're always getting the height of our fence where the horse and rider are going to leave the ground. Thanks for listening to this Fod Pod mini sode. For unlimited access to more lessons like this, sign up for Practical Horseman on Demand at practicalhorsemanondemand.com. Don't forget to use promo code Fod Pod. That's P H O D P O D to get fifteen percent off. Thanks again for listening.